Hi, my name is Janelle McLeod, and I am the advisor for the National Junior Honor Society chapter at Johnson Williams Middle School. The Johnson Williams National Junior Honor Society has been active since the 2017-2018 school year, and it held its first induction in April 2018. Since, Johnson Williams National Junior Honor Society has inducted three cohorts of candidates, and today we will induct the fourth. Each student who is a member has had an application process that examines their academic prowess, commitment to service, character and integrity, and their leadership abilities. Today, each and every student who will be inducted has proven to themselves and to their community that they are dedicated to scholastic excellence and representing themselves at the highest level by leading and inspiring. This achievement is being recognized during the National Association of Secondary Principals National School Leadership Week, with this year's theme being Leadership Unlimited. How fitting for our current members, new inductees, and the entire student body. Despite the drastic changes and extremely challenging times this year and last with the novel coronavirus, our students persevered and they remained resilient. They pushed themselves beyond personal issues, personal failures, lockdown, loss, struggles, and restrictions all out of their control. And here they are, thriving and achieving. As faculty, staff, parents, and friends, we could not be more proud. Now we will have Johnson Williams Principal, Mr. Evan Robb, with our welcome. Welcome to our virtual National Junior Honor Society induction ceremony for Johnson Williams Middle School. I'd like to say a big congratulations to our students. This has been a challenging year, but certainly an induction into the National Junior Honor Society represents all of the hard work that you've been able to do and the grades that you've been able to achieve over the course of this entire year. So congratulations to our students. To our families, congratulations that your child is being inducted into the National Junior Honor Society here at Johnson Williams and enjoy the ceremony. Our chapter has been engaged in service projects in the community and has been tackling social issues. The chapter made a call to action asking each person in our community to donate items to the less fortunate, highlighting that after the holidays, donations dwindle. This video will show a project completed by our members in 2019. Hey, do you remember when we were driving to the mall and there was that homeless guy at the red light? Yeah, why? Well, I was thinking, like, what do they do for basic things like socks, deodorant, and gloves after the holidays? Like, where do they get them? I don't know. Here is where you can help out. National Junior Honor Society is sponsoring a supplies for the homeless drive beginning Monday, January 7th, ending Friday, January 11th. We will be seeking items such as toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant, socks, shirts, pants, razors, non-perishable foods, blank and blankets. All items will be given to Winchester Medical, who then gives it to the homeless people who visit the ER. After the holidays, the hospital sees a drop in, sees a drop in donations for the homeless. Therefore, they are counting on you to help. You can earn a free breakfast with donuts. If you have questions, please see Mr. Vera or an NJHS member. Thank you. Students donated personal care items, toothbrushes, toothpaste, deodorant, shampoo, and etc. They also donated clothing, which included socks, hats, gloves, and non-perishable food. They then sorted the items to create a personal bag for the homeless who came into the emergency room so that they will have some supplies for when they leave the hospital and go home. The members completed around 100 bags in total to donate to the homeless. Now we will have the National Junior Honor Society's reading the five pillars. Hi, my name is Allie Lynch and I'm a member of the National Junior Honor Society. Scholarship. Scholarship denotes a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours in reading and study, knowing the lasting benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended, for human education ends with the end of life. Knowledge is one great element in life, which leads to the highest success, and it can be acquired in only one way, through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past. 
the torch guiding us to understand the present and the light that illuminates the future. Candidates have the charge to continually expand their world through the opportunities inherent in scholarship. Marion Wright Elderman once said, Education is for improving the lives of others and for leaving your community and world better than you found it. Hi, I'm Shane and I will be reading Citizenship. Uh, the obligations each member of our society faces to live up to the democratic ideals given to us by the founders of our country. The responsibilities each of us has to our home community, our state, our nation, and our world are many. As good citizens, we are bound to live up to the laws and guidelines which unite us as a civilized society. Good citizens work together to improve not only our lives, but the lives of all our fellow citizens. Good citizenship requires that we remain strong and vigilant in protecting the freedoms and rights that have been granted to us and in preventing injustice from entering our lives. We, the members of the chapter, chapter are called to live up to the high standards of citizenship from this day forward. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. Barack Obama. Hi, this is Jackson Ellis from the National Junior Honor Society, and this is leadership. Leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school in taking initiative into the classroom and school activities. The real leader strives to train and aid others to reach their common goals of success. The price of leadership is sacrifice, the willing to yield one's personal interest for the interest of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. No matter what power and resources may exist in a school, community, or nation, they are ineffectual without the guidance of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed, thus to lead a meaningful and substantive charge into each of our members. A true leader has the confidence to stand alone the courage to make tough, tough decisions, and the compassion to listen to the, to the need of others. He does not set out to be a leader, but becomes one with the equality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. Douglas MacArthur. Hi, I'm Savannah. I'm an NJHS. Character. Character is the force within the individual, individual that distinguishes each person from, from others. It creates for each of us our individuality, our goodness. It is that without which no one can respect oneself nor hope to attain the respect of others. It is the force of character that guides one through life and once developed grows steadily within. Character is the achieved and not received. It is the product of constant thought and action, the daily striving to make one to make the right choice. The problem of character is the problem of self-control. We must be in reality what we wish to appear to others, to, to be rather than to seem. By demonstrating such qualities as respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, caring, and citizenship, we may hope to provide, an, provide by example that we value character. Maya Angelou once said, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, how you can still come out of it. Hi, I'm Armand Solanke, and this is service. Service can be established in the routine of the day's work where many opportunities arise to help others both at school and in the community. A willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or public recognition is the quality we seek in our membership and promote for the entire student body. We are committed to volunteering our time and talents to the creation of a better tomorrow. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. For our first keynote address, we will hear from Mr. Kamoy Martin. Mr. Martin is a successful entrepreneur and businessman. Mr. Martin is a graduate of Morgan State University, and he is a leader in coaching and motivating like-minded business enthusiasts to pursue their dreams and reach financial freedom. 
How's it going guys? This is Kamoy Martin. I want to congratulate Johnson Williams Middle School's newest inductees of the National Junior Honor Society. Guys, this is a big deal. This is something that people are hearing about all across the country and even some parts of the world. Man, I was in Costa Rica when I heard the great news. And you guys have been working really hard, getting some amazing grades, being those true leaders of your community and just displaying such amazing qualities. And that has positioned you guys to achieve such an acceptance in this amazing organization, the National Junior Honor Society. I want you guys to understand something. Not a lot of people get to accomplish what you guys have accomplished. When I say that you guys are true leaders, you guys are, you guys are such amazing examples and you guys are showing what other individuals really need to do to step their game up. So that way they can go on and become great scholars in high school and college and so on and so forth. You guys are on that path and you guys are making a difference. See, if you guys just keep doing what you're doing and which I highly encourage, man, because you guys are already showing what it takes to really live the life of your dreams if you work really hard. And I want to talk about that because look, I've been an entrepreneur now, full-time entrepreneur for over eight plus years. I've built several successful businesses. I've traveled to over 40 countries and I have met some amazing successful people as well from different backgrounds. And one thing that I realized amongst all these successful people from around the world is that they all kind of have similar qualities and characteristics and you guys are really displaying a lot of those characteristics by the accomplishments that you guys have made. So that's why I'm encouraging you guys to keep going down that path, keep the focus, keep the hunger, keep the determination because you guys are really set up to live the life of your dreams. And why do you want to live the life of your dreams? Well, look, here's the reality. Not a lot of people live the life of their dreams. The same way how not a lot of people get to become a part of this amazing organization that you guys just got inducted into, not a lot of people live the life of their dreams. So you guys have shown that you guys are that, that outlier. You guys are that, 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 that small percentile that are willing to do what it takes to really get to that top level. So I have something for you guys I want to share with you that that can literally guarantee you to live the life of your dreams. I created an acronym for the word dream so that way you guys can really understand this and take this home with you and take it along your journey. Let's talk about the letter D in dream. D stands for, in my opinion, determination. You gotta be determined, guys. And you guys have really shown that. I mean, you guys are getting some amazing grades. You guys are standing out in your class and your community, achieving some major things already. But look, you gotta continue being determined. It's not easy living the life of your dreams. It's not, I mean, let's think about it. I mean, to live a life of your dreams, I mean, you're able to you know, live the life that you want on your terms. You get to make the type of money that you want, not what somebody else wants for you. You get to really um, drive what you want to drive. You get to travel where you want to travel. You get to help a lot of people in a way that you want to help people all around the world. I mean, living the life of your dreams is like, it's honestly just the, one of the ultimate goals. And in order to do that, you need to continue being determined. See, to live the life of your dreams, you're gonna have some ups and you're gonna have some downs. You're gonna have some wins, you're gonna have some losses, and it's not always gonna be easy. And honestly, what separates people from being able to get to that point and those that don't is, is their determination. And you guys have shown your determination. And that's why I'm just saying, just continue going. Keep playing the part, keep doing your thing. So D's for determination. Let's talk about R, R in the word dream. Repeat, that's what R stands for, repeat. See, a lot of times we see really successful people that live the life of their dreams and we think that, you know, they're doing something massively different every single day in order to reach that high level of success. And that's not necessarily true. See. What a lot of these high level people that are able to live the life of their dreams are doing, they're just finding these few things 
that they know that if they just repeat over and over and over again, it's going to allow them to have that amazing outcome. And in turn, it's going to allow them to live their life, their dreams, kind of like what you guys are doing. Look, think about it. To get into this honor society, there were probably some things that you literally repeated. I mean, you went to the same class every single you know time you had to go. You had to pick up the same books to, and you had to read and do little and, and, and enhance and do these assignments. You had to take these tests, you know, and these are things that you had to do week in, week out, month in, month out. But it was the same things that you repeated over and over and over again. And what that do that got you those amazing grades that got you those amazing results. So don't get caught up in thinking that you have to do things, you know, massively different. No, it's just continually doing those few things that you know, that's going to create the results and you just repeat over and over and over again. And it's going to put you on the path to live the life of your dreams. Guys, rinse and repeat, you know, that little thing right there has made such a difference in my life because I used to think that you had to do a million and one different things, but no, it's really just a few and being consistent and repeating that over and over again. So let's talk about E. E stands for enthusiasm. Now this one's interesting because look, I'm naturally an introvert and most of my life, people would often tell me, you know, Kamoy is quiet and, and he has very little to say, right? And the, and the reality was I was pretty quiet and, but I had so much to say, but for whatever reason, I just didn't really care to share it often. Right. Cause I was just, I guess a naturally quiet individual. And there's actually nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, introverted people, and are, are literally some of the most brightest individuals in the world. They just keep a lot of information to themselves, right? But here's what I'll tell you. If you have certain goals and desires and dreams that you want to accomplish, you want to be enthusiastic about it. You want to be enthusiastic in the action. You want to be enthusiastic in vocalizing the things that you need to get done. You want to be enthusiastic in making a difference in your community. You want to be enthusiastic about doing the necessary steps over and over again to achieve the things that you have a desire to achieve. See, no one gets really far by being just dull and, and just, and really low vibration with what they're doing. You want to be enthusiastic and just when I say enthusiastic, it doesn't mean that you have to yell at the top of your lungs or you have to be bouncing off the walls, you know, with your ideas in order to get far. When I say enthusiastic, I mean, just taking it a not a notch higher, putting yourself in, in a state where people just know like, wow, this person is serious about their dreams and goals. That's what I mean. You want to be enthusiastic. So the next one's a, a in the word dream action, action guys. I mean, you guys are taking massive action in your academics. You guys are taking massive action in your classroom, in your school, in your community, you're making a difference. You guys are truly, you know, exemplifying what it takes to be amazing leaders that that just strive at the highest level in school. You guys are taking action. That's why you guys have, have got inducted into this amazing organization. But look, don't stop taking action guys. And you know, as you guys are doing what you're doing to get to the next level and matriculate through school, you're going to realize, you know, the, the higher the level of success, the harder you're going to have to work which is why you want to remain in action. And here's what I'll tell you. And this is something that the most successful people on the planet experience. They go through times that that aren't always easy. And when they're strive, when they achieve things and strive to go to the next level, they, they hit certain roadblocks and challenges and guess what gets them through those roadblocks action. They don't stop. You know, if you're feeling up, great. Keep putting forth the action. If you're feeling down, that's great. Keep putting forth the action. You're experiencing self-doubt. 
Some people aren't necessarily believing you. You don't necessarily have the right support that you want. That's fine. Keep, pouring, keep putting forth the action. I promise you this. You keep putting forth the action, you're going to get to where you want to get to. My mentor shared with me many years ago. He said, Kamoy, inch by inch makes everything a cinch. And yard by yard makes everything hard. What does he mean by that? Well, look, don't get caught up on making the major steps, you know, to, to achieve success and get to that next goal. You know, just continue putting action. Take the small steps, step by step by step, inch by inch by inch, and it will make things a cinch. You'll achieve that goal. You'll live the life of your dreams. It's proven, guys. So that's A, taking action. The next one, the letter M in the word dream. Now look, this is the last letter, but yet it's the most important. And that's mindset. See, look, guys, you guys are some very intelligent individuals. You guys have shown, I mean, it's not, like I said it over and over again, but it's not easy getting inducted into this organization. You have to work really hard. You got to continuously sacrifice and focus, get good grades, work really hard, you know, on your schoolwork. And you got to just, you have to have that amazing character that you guys have. It's not, it's not, it's not easy. And it, it takes having the right mindset and able to do what you just did. Well, guess what? Life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So you guys need to continually cultivate the right mindset. And as you guys are going to higher levels, guess what? It's going to be harder work. And guess what? You're going to have to learn. You're going to have to adapt. You're going to have to look guys, if you want to be really successful and if you want to live your life, your dreams, you're going to have to learn to adapt, right? Adapt, adapt, adapt. The only thing that remains the same is change. And those who adapt persevere and those who don't merely fade away. And guess what? A part of having the right mindset is being able to adapt to when you encounter new situations, new classes, new schoolwork, I mean, new subjects, new, new, everything, new teachers, new, new grade levels. You're going to have to learn how to strive, get used to this new envi environment and, 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 and continue pressing on and making big things happen. This is necessary. And how you're able to get through that and grow through that is cultivating the right mindset. Well, how do you create the right mindset? Continue reading the books. But read different types of books, books that are going to grow you, books that are going to allow you, that are going to allow you to discover more of you and tap into that, that, that deeper level of thinking. What else is going to affect your mindset? Hanging around the right people, guys. I can't express to you enough how important it is to hang around the right people. You are the average of the five people that you hang around the most. See, the people that you hang around the most, that's going to determine your life. That's going to determine your frame of mind. So be, be very mindful of the way that you just choose the people that you hang out with. Matter of fact, you should start choosing the people that you hang out with the same way that these basketball teams and football teams choose their players. Because guess what? You want to have the right people in your circle because this is what's going to allow you to win those championships, also known as the life of your dreams. So that's it, guys. I mean, you guys have proved so much at this point. You guys are making so many people proud. And I know this is just the very beginning. And look, as I'm talking to you guys, I wish I was right there with you because I know that I'm talking to the future leaders of this world. A lot of you guys are going to be just making such major impact in the community that you're in. I mean, people, you're going to impact people all around the world. You guys are future, future doctors, future lawyers, future entrepreneurs, future, future politicians. I mean, whatever your goal, whatever your dream is, you guys are the future. Don't stop what you're doing. You guys are doing all the right things and you're well on your way. I'm proud of you and I appreciate everything that you're doing. 
and I'll see you guys somewhere around the world making things happen. Stay blessed, guys. Our members are expected to maintain and uphold the pillars of the National Junior Honor Society. Students must maintain their grades and remain committed to service. Students are expected to be productive and positive citizens, and they should demonstrate strong leadership and integrity. Students should serve their community and their school communities by volunteering, mentoring, and lending a helping hand. The Johnson Williams National Junior Honor Society members are expected to be role models here and far beyond to enhance the world we live in. Always give back and contribute in every way you can. This includes all of your member responsibilities. Now at this time, I would like to formally introduce the 2021 new members of the Johnson Williams National Junior Honor Society. Sydney Althouse. Kristen Bartlett. Abigail Chauncey. Carson Chin. John Ferraro, Kago Johnson, Luke Lamaster, Warren Mayberger, Joshua O'Keefe, Mallory Riza. Maddox Steen, Emily Vincent, Aubrey Wagner, Morgan Walker, William Weida, Mia Wolf. Jonah Zercher. Hi, my name is Mr. Casey. I'm the lead school counselor here at Johnson Williams Middle School, and I'm very proud to be a part of this important event. Congratulations to all of the new National Junior Honor Society inductees. At this time, we'll review the National Junior Honor Society pledge. I pledge to maintain high scholastic standing, to endeavor intelligently and courageously to be a leader to give myself freely in service to others, and to hold as fundamental and worthy an untarnished character. In doing so, I shall prove myself worthy of a place in the National Junior Honor Society. Again, congratulations everyone, and now we'll send it back to Ms. McLeod. At this time, we will have our closing keynote address from Ms. Deshauna Barber, Miss USA 2016. Deshauna Barber is the Chief Executive Officer of the Service Women's Action Network, an Army Captain, and former Miss USA. Miss Barber is an award-winning international speaker, coach, and entrepreneur. Miss Barber is a top-rated speaker who is widely sought after by Fortune 500 companies. Hello, National Junior Honor Society. My name is Deshauna Barber, and I am beyond excited to be today's keynote speaker. First and foremost, I want to congratulate you all on your accomplishments and on getting to this point. I think that this is an amazing organization to be a part of, and it goes to show that you all are working hard, you are focused on your grades, and you are dedicated to educating yourselves and to becoming the best versions of yourselves. Who is Deshauna Barber? I am currently the CEO of Service Women's Action Network. It is a nonprofit that is dedicated to the well being of women veterans and female service members. I happen to be in my 11th year of serving in the United States Army Reserve. And in 2016, I was the first soldier to win the prestigious crown of Miss USA. 
So I'm Miss USA 2016, a queen. <laughs> and I went on after Miss USA to become a full-time motivational speaker. And in 2020, January of 2020, I became CEO of Service Women's Action Network. So I'm only a year into being a CEO, but a lot has learned along the way. So I'm beyond excited to show you all and talk to you all about the things that I've learned on this journey to where I am today. So let's first start off with what is it that Deshauna did to become Miss USA 2016? Well, in the summer of 2009, I was a sophomore in college at Virginia State University. I was pursuing my business management degree. I was also on an army scholarship, so I was preparing to serve in the military upon graduation. And I was working in the women's department and a woman walked up to me and said a very interesting question. She says, were you born in this country? And I was immediately offended. I said, yes, ma'am, I was born in this country. She goes on to say, how old are you? I said, 19 years old. She says, do you have any children? I said, no, ma'am, I don't have any children. She says, are you married? I said, no, ma'am, I am not married. May I help you find something? She was a very persistent customer, I would have to say. She then goes on to say something that changed my life forever. She says, you are so beautiful. You look like you could be the next Miss USA. And I laughed at this woman hysterically. I had never seen a pageant. I had never competed in a pageant. The only thing that I knew about pageants was the movie Miss Congeniality with Sandra Bullock, which you all are probably too young to know. <laughs> and I laughed at her hysterically. I said, you're talking about pageants? Do you think I could compete in pageants? And she says, yes, you're beautiful. I think you would be amazing if you were to compete in a pageant. And she convinced me to meet her at Starbucks the very next day, which I did. And she brought this foot tall stack of pageant books and goes on to convince me to enter into my first pageant, which I did at the end of that year. Now, mind you, when you all compete or not when you compete, when you watch Miss USA, you notice that there are states. So you have Miss Mississippi, Miss Washington, Miss Georgia, Miss DC. All these women have competed at the state level already. So before you can hit the Miss USA stage, you first have to compete for your state title first, and then you go on to compete for Miss USA. So I committed to competing for Miss DC, where I lived locally at the time. So I go into the competition the very first year and I lose. I go back the second year to compete for my state title and I lose. I go back the third year to compete for my state title and I lose. I go back the fourth year to compete for my state title and I lose. Mind you, these competitions are once a year. I go back the fifth year to compete for my state title and I lose. I go back the sixth year and compete for my state title and guess what happens? I lose. <laughs> So we're talking six years later, I started competing at 19. I am now 25 years old. I called this woman on the phone on my sixth year, six years after our target conversation. And I tell her, you told me I could be the next Miss USA. I can't even get past the state competition. And she says, Deshauna, keep trying, keep trying, do not give up. I see something, I believe it in my spirit. Like I just know you're gonna be Miss USA. And I really thought this woman was crazy. <laughs> she had to have been crazy. So I listened to what she says. And in June of 2015, this amazing woman passed away from leukemia. And in December, 2015, I go back and compete for my state title and I win. And then six months after that, in June 2016, I go on to be crowned the first soldier to win the prestigious title of Miss USA. And then in January of 2017, I placed top nine amongst 86 countries at the Miss Universe competition. So what does this have to do with this association, this organization? What does this have to do with you? 
It has to do with what life is really about. And life is about not giving up. That's what life is about. Life is about fighting for the things that you want. It is because of my title as Miss USA that I've gone on to become a successful international speaker. It's because of my title as Miss USA and my persistence to achieve the title that I've gone on to become the youngest CEO to run Service Women's Action Network. I have 10 staff members under me and 11 board of directors that work with me to run an amazing nonprofit organization. I would not have the qualifications or even really the, the qualifications that set me apart from the other candidates without having one Miss USA. All the moments that I questioned my worth, all the moments where I questioned whether or not I was capable of winning this title, all of those moments, and I still fought through the doubt, I still fought through the multiple moments when the judges did not choose me. I fought through multiple clashes in my mind on why is it that I'm investing so much money into this and why is it that I'm still fighting for this? Is it really worth it? And what I realized is that my dream was worth fighting for. So as you all continue to function and, and move through school, remember that your dreams are worth fighting for. And then while you're thinking about your dreams, while you're thinking about all the things that you want to do in life, think about your purpose and how your purpose can impact society. I knew that my title as Miss USA and being a service member, being a woman veteran, being a woman service member, I knew that with all these titles combined, I could use it to really make an impact when it comes to legislation that impacts the lives of our female service members. I knew that my title held weight and that if I used it in the way that I needed to, I would not only be able to do the things that I love that I'm passionate about, which is serving our veterans, I also knew that I would be able to give back. Each and every one of you have to think about what it is that you want to do in life and think about how it betters our society. As we all know, America is not perfect. That's very clear. But what we can do is be an addition to this country. We can be a contributing positive factor to this country. We can impact our communities in our own way. Imagine a world where every single individual per person did what they needed to do to give back to their communities in some way, shape or form in their own individual way. My goal with SWAN is to give back, to make sure that those that serve this country receive the proper treatment, the proper uh, medical resources, the proper counseling, the proper financial um, impact, the, the proper safety precautions to be able to serve safely. Those are things that I'm passionate about. And being Miss USA, serving in the military, being a motivational speaker, all transitioned and transferred into what it is that I do as a successful CEO. And I'm thankful for that. Each and every one of you have a purpose, you have a calling. Your job as young people is to fight for it and never get tired of fighting for it because when it's your dream, it's worth fighting for, it's worth the exhaustion. It might take a little bit of resilience, it might take a little bit of tenacity, it might take a couple punches where you have to take the punches and get up and keep fighting the good fight, but it is worth it coming from someone that spent seven years trying to compete for a state title so that I could compete for Miss USA. Coming from someone that was fatigued and tired after years upon years of loss, I am so beyond thankful that I never gave up. I'm so beyond thankful that I knew that I could do this and I was going to fight and fight and fight until I had no options left. Life is not easy. There are going to be a lot of shut doors in each of your faces. People are going to tell you no a lot. There are going to be opportunities that you don't get. But just know your worth. Know what you're capable of. And know 
that you can't achieve anything without working for it. You have to put in the work. And I know each of you can do that. I want to thank each and every one of you for the opportunity to speak today. And good luck. Congratulations to our extraordinary new members of the Johnson Williams National Junior Honor Society. We welcome you and we are excited to join in service with you. All of your gifts are relevant and they serve a great purpose in the world. Thank you for your leadership and your passion for excellence.